In theory, maple sugaring hasn't changed for centuries. Put a hole in the tree, collect the sap, and boil. The difference nowadays is in the practice. The image that many people have of maple sugaring is still that we're using a lot of buckets and, and tractors or horses to draw around a, a sledge, and that's really not the way maple is done any longer. For 68 years, scientists at the University of Vermont Proctor Maple Research Center have studied and tested maple trees. What starts here as a question or observation becomes an experiment, which in turn leads to changes in the maple industry. Proctor Maple has helped in refining tools like tubing, vacuum pumps, and reverse osmosis to allow sugar makers to maximize yields and get the most out of the short and sweet season. Maple is all about flow. On average, it takes 40 years for a maple tree to be mature enough to tap. At least, that's what most of us used to think. So we were doing an experiment looking at where sap comes from in the tree, particularly under vacuum. We, we understand quite well how sap moves in trees normally, but with vacuum we're moving the sap around quite a bit more. So during the course of that investigation, we found that for at least part of the flow period, we were pulling water right out of the ground, through the roots, up through the stem and out of the tap hole. And in doing that, we decided that if that were in fact true, that the top became immaterial. And so to test that, we went and cut the top off a small tree and started to pull vacuum on it to collect the sap and then found out that we could, uh, in fact, get quite a, a good amount of sap from the tree in that manner. It definitely does not appear anything like traditional maple triggering, other than the fact that we're using tubing. That's right, sap from saplings. Certainly there are a lot of uh, head scratches and what, you know, sort of, oh, that's interesting. But, you know, I think we thought about this and worked on this for a long time without really being able to talk about it. The research into tapping saplings began in 2010. Abby Vandenberg worked with Perkins to make this discovery. The fundamental level at which I operate is scientists interested in how trees work. And from that level, this has been, you know, just a really neat um, research topic to explore. Does this work physiologically? What is the physiology involved? This is very similar in some ways to lots of other existing agriculture. So as someone interested in agriculture, it just kind of seems like a natural extension of practices that we already use. To me, this represents one other tool in the toolbox for producers that might have some obstacles to expanding their operation. This technology is still years away from being commercially available. Vandenberg and Perkins expect this plantation approach will benefit sugar makers with land constraints or as a way to recoup losses after storm damage in seven years instead of 40. No matter how beneficial this approach may become, Perkins knows there'll be doubters. I think the general public really just needs to understand more about the process when they first hear about it. We're you know, killing baby trees um, and, and that it's something that they think might, might swamp the, the maple world with syrup and could harm maple producers or, or that the syrup is going to be different. Well, it isn't. It, it, the syrup is exactly the same. It's made by trees. It's sugar they're just pulling out of a tree. Um, in terms of killing young trees, this doesn't kill them. They actually uh, do quite well. They'll, they'll continue to live for a long period of time. The perception is, is sometimes uh, not the same as the reality. And I think people, once they understand the process, will, will accept it more. No matter if a maple is stately or skinny, the sap won't run up or down without cycles of freezing and thawing. When it comes to sugaring, it's Mother Nature who gets the final say. Over time, uh, I think the plantation method is probably going to become more and more uh, commonplace. It's going to take a long period of time. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it's similar in many ways to lots of other crops. So if you look at vineyards, very, very different than they were a long time ago. Apple orchards, very, very different. New technology changing all the time. Um, 
Christmas tree plantations. If you would ask your grandfather uh, about going to cut a Christmas tree, you would not have gone to a plantation. They're, they just didn't exist back then. And now it's a very uh, strong tradition for people to go out and cut their Christmas trees in a plantation. And so just over a couple of generations, things change. Um, and we don't really perceive them because they're happening over that kind of time frame, but they do change quite a lot. As this plantation method shows, the experiments at the Proctor Maple Research Center always sugar off to a greater understanding of the world around us. In Underhill Center, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.